The goal of die is not about gaining a lot of extra knowledge. It's about taking the knowledge that you already have to organize it in a systematic approach so that you can put the knowledge that you have into action. Well, listen, this has been a great program. It's the seven-sided gold die program, this a system that Stan has put together. Um, you know, for me, I, I know so many principles, but I don't have a system in place that reminds me how to use the principles that I know. Seven sides, it has eight pivot points. I want you to find where the one, two, and the three come together. Find where the one, two, and three come together and put your finger like right there. And then find when four, five, and six come together, put your thumb right there. So what you're literally doing is you are doing this. Alright? And then I want you to pivot it. See? Pivot. <coughs> when something pivot, it literally is moving, isn't it? What you really want to do is you want to take that impossible thing and you want to begin to pivot it. You want to begin to move it. You want to begin to take it off a dead center and you want to begin to pivot it. Pivot starts with what letter? Point starts with what letter? P. So all your lessons here are going to be double P lessons. This actually helped me to think what I'm going to do next. Where's my priority? How many pivot points are on this die? Eight. eight. Yes, you're absolutely right. There's eight pivot points. So there's seven sides and eight pivot points. Pivot starts with P. Point starts with P. Double P lessons. Your first lesson is paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. It's the moment in time that you take a sheet of paper and a pencil and you begin to write down what you've been thinking about as you have committed to do your what? Best on that one thing and you have had an open mind, right? And you begin to talk to other people and get some outside advice. When you take that sheet of paper and you begin to write down those things that you begin, begin to thought about as your thought process has expanded, okay, you begin to write those things down. That's the moment in time that you literally give birth to organized thought. You literally give birth to organized thought. Does that make sense? It stops running around in your head like this, okay, and it comes out of you. You cause the intangible to become tangible. Critical step in creation is paper and pencil. Look around this room here and I want you to see anything in this room and just tell me what it is. What do you see, Bob? Chair. Chair, okay. A chair actually started in somebody's what? Mind. Mind in their imaginations. But before it became a chair, before it, it was actually designed like this, they took a paper and pencil and drew it out, right? Whether that was on a computer or regardless of how that thought process came from the inside of them to the out. What about this watch? This watch started in somebody's what? Mind. Mind. But it passed through a sheet of paper in the process of being created. If you begin to look at Toastmasters as an organization, as a club, somebody thought about it, right? But then they literally took a paper and pencil and they begin to draw it out. They begin to de design that thinking process. Every business, every entity, every single thing that's been created, whether it be this, all passes through a sheet of paper in the process of being created. So what that tells you is that if you want to create something in your life, if you want to begin to cause something to change or something to begin to pivot, to begin to move, to begin to pivot, you're going to need to take a sheet of paper and pencil and you're going to need to take it from the inside of you and finally get it to what? The outside. Get it to the outside. You literally want to move it from there. Once you have that information on the outside, then you can begin to review it and you can begin to categorize it. You can actually begin to get people to begin to join your team or to help you in your efforts to get this one thing done. Does that make sense? And I was thrilled to be invited to come today to listen to Stan's um, presentation. Um, 
I needed dice in my life. Um, I am working on um, some personal change and some business change. And the gold die is the tangible needed for a visual learner. So um, side one of the die is my work now focusing on uh, the task at hand. And um, side two, broadening uh, of the dice, broadening my opinions so that I can um, listen to others and see others' um, point of view. And so not shutting down my own creativity. So the top one, two, three die is important in my life, and, uh, and Stan put that into a, a very good visual for me. So I highly recommend it. Come see Stan. We're going to begin to take all the information that we know, and we're going to begin to break it into four categories. Your top one is going to be doable. What is doable? What can I do right now with the resources I presently have? Okay, let's say we want to go down to Best Buy. And we want to get a big screen television. We want the biggest thing that they have. If we take that task now and we begin to look at it, it may be doable for us to go down to Best Buy and look. However, it may not be doable for us to bring it home because we may not have the what? Money. Money, cash, okay, or whatever the case may be. We may not even have a vehicle to put it in. So we know that it is possible, it's possible for us to go down to Best Buy and get a big television, but it may not be doable, okay? It is doable for us to drive down there and to see what's available. It is maybe doable for us to get on the internet and do some searching around for us to begin to get the education, for us to begin to develop the knowledge about that, but it may not be doable, it may not it may not be doable, so it's only possible if we don't have the cash. You know, if we had the cash, we know that we could do it. There's a key word right in here, and that's if. The only thing that stands in between something being possible and something being doable is if. If you have the money, then you could go to Best Buy and bring a television home, could you? If you had the vehicle to put it into, if this, if that, then every single thing that's possible, it only takes you resolving the if for it no longer to be possible. As soon as you get rid of this if, what happens to this? It moves from what pile to what pile? It's going to move to the doable pile. That's exactly right. When we eliminate this if, when we figure out how to get rid of the if, if we get rid of that if, then it literally is going to move from the possible power to the doable power. The task of the doable job, uh, that, that power, the thing that you want to do, is its goal or its objective is to get rid of the what? It's to get rid of the ifs. Now, there's another pile over here, and this pile is called the what? The impossible, because that's what we talked about getting done, the impossible. And this could be the impossible dream. Because nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. It may be just the big dream. Have you ever had a dream or a vision that was so big that you didn't want to share it with other people because they laugh at you? Really, anything that seems to be impossible, the only reason it's possible, it becomes possible if this, if this, if this, if this, if this. In other words, we realize that what seems to be impossible is not impossible if we take care of this, 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 right? It's identifying the ifs. So no matter what we're facing in our life, we've got to begin to identify the ifs. And we, if we don't know what the ifs are, we're sitting in here, we need to go talk to what? We need to go talk to counsel. We need to go talk to somebody. If we don't even know what the ifs are, we can figure out what the ifs are. And if we can figure out the, what the ifs are, then literally what we can do is we can begin to have a what type of mind? An open mind. And we can begin to go out and get outside knowledge and information so that we literally expand our understanding so we know what it's going to require for us to get rid of what? The if. And that's all we have to do. The moment that we get rid of the ifs, or the moment actually that we clearly identify what the ifs are in the impossible. We take the impossible. 
if we can clearly identify those five, six, seven ifs, ten ifs, whatever they are, when we can identify those ifs, that means that we can move it from the impossible pile to what? Possible. To the possible pile. It doesn't mean that the impossible is doable yet. It only means that we was able to take it from our impossible pile and move it to our possible. And when we move something to our possible pile, then we can begin to figure out what it is that we have to do to eliminate one if at a time. One if at a time. And who's responsible to get rid of the yes? We are. We are. Anything we can imagine, anything we want to accomplish, we can accomplish by getting rid of one if at a time. And I just saw Stan, and we learned about the gold dye and how we can use that to help retention and to help our students. And I'm really excited by the concept. I'm excited. I'm the Dean of Education here at the school. And to hear the staff and as excited as they were as, and as engaged, the way that we can use this to focus the staff and then to help the students focus one student at a time, one situation at a time, I think it's going to be a great device for us. And I look forward to helping Stan introduce this across our other campuses. Thank you.